Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is a Minuer MHP30 hot plate for SMD rework. Believe it or not, this is actually the first product I have reviewed in a long time where the model number actually makes sense. The M, of course, stands for Minuer and HP is for hot plate. And 30 is the dimension of the hot plate surface. And you can see here it is 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters, or roughly 1.2 inches by 1.2 inches. And the entire thing is, let's see, just over 5 centimeters tall. And by the way, this is not a new product. It has been around for at least a couple of years now. I just never got my hands on one until now. So we'll put it through its paces in this video. PCBWay provided me this MHP30 for a review. They specialize in PCB manufacturing and assembly services. Ordering PCB from them is very easy. You can get a quote of your PCB in just seconds. Once you upload your Gerber file, with just a few clicks, you are pretty much ready to go. The pricing of their services is also very competitive. So be sure to check them out for your next project. They also have an online store. If you are interested in getting an MHP30 after watching this video, you can find it there. And I will leave a link in the video description below as well. Like all the miniware products I have reviewed so far, the design of the product is quite elegant, and you can see it even from the product packaging. Their entire product lineup has a premium feel to it. As you can see from the packaging, it comes with the hot plate itself, a USB cable, and the largest component in the package is actually the power adapter itself. Now this is a 65 watt rated PD adapter. It is definitely a lot more substantial compared to other similarly rated PD adapters I have anyway. Now let's take a closer look at the hot plate itself. It is tiny but quite heavy for its size. It looks like it's made of anodized aluminum which looks quite nice. Even though the heater is not in direct contact with the base, it is via these standoffs which slows down the heat transfer, the base still gets quite toasty over time, which is normal according to the manual. And here you can see a metal mesh that is around this section here, and that is actually also to limit the heat transfer between the base and the top portion here. And at the bottom you can see we also have these two feet you can kind of extend to improve the stability of the unit, which is really a nice touch. And by the way, you can see we have two buttons here in the back, and these are used to set the temperatures and get to the various manual items. We'll take a quick look here. The hot plate is fairly easy to operate with the two buttons at the back. Now it does require a little bit of getting used to, but the basic operation is very straightforward. Once you plug it in, it's in standby mode, as you can see here. To enter setup, you just short press button B, which is on the right hand side, and you can get to the manual items here. You can see here, now we have the show type, oh by the way the show type here is essentially whether we're not showing the voltage or power, so to get to the actual setting you just long press the button A and you can see we can change between power and voltage. And it does not have a accept button so you have to wait. So now for example we can long press button B to accept the settings. So that's how you get to the menu item. So let's take a look again at what menu items we have. So press again, you can see we have the M1 temperature setting. By the way, out of the box, you can set three predefined temperatures. I have already changed, as you can see, the M3 to 350 instead of out of the box, 300 degrees. And sleep time, backlight, and you can pretty much leave everything as default and that already works very well. So let's get out of the uh, menu setting here. We can demonstrate how the hot plate works. All right, so now let's power it up. To power it up, you just short press button A, and it will start heating. Now it does take quite some time for the unit to heat up. So I'm just gonna let it heat up, and we will come back here. Once the heater is on, you can press button A to cycle through the preset temperatures. And right now we wanted to set it to 350. Oh, by the way, the MHP30 also has tilt detection built in. This is a great safety feature. In the event the unit is tipped over, the heating will stop. So let me show you here. So now if I put it on site, and you can see that 
it detected it's tipped over and the heating automatically stopped. So let me resume the heating and let's bring it up to temperature, which is set at 350 degrees. It does take over 3 minutes to reach 350 degrees. And if you set the temperature lower, for instance, if you are using it primarily as a preheater, then you can achieve the operating temperature a little bit quicker. While it's heating up, the LED color changes as well. That gives you some visual indication, I guess. I actually wanted to get my hands on one of these hot plates for a while now. And the reason is that over the years, I have accumulated quite a few of these burnt out LED light boards. And I wanted to salvage some of the LEDs and other components, just for fun, of course. But the aluminum PCBs are actually very hard to work with without a hot plate, as blowing hot air from the top usually does not work due to the high thermal conductivity of the aluminum plate underneath. Of course, you could, I suppose, blow hot air from underneath, but unless you have the correct setup to hold the PCB in place, it is easier said than done. So a hot plate or a reflow oven is the way to go. Now, before proceeding further, I do want to take a look at how uniform the temperature is on this hot plate. So for that, I'm using my Hick Micro Thermal Camera to take a look here. And as you can see, the temperature is actually really uniform and currently measured by the thermal camera is at 340 degrees, which is a little bit of off, but that is to be expected given the emissivity and whatnot, all those parameters, and it may not be an exact match. Anyway, that looks really good from the thermal camera point of view. All right, let's put the PCB on. I got a feeling it's gonna take a while for it to heat up. So let's wait. So some components already are desoldered. I'm just waiting for the LED here. Yeah, the LED, no problem. So let's uh, take a look. No problem. Now the shape of this board is actually a little bit problematic because the weight is on the side here. As you can see, it's overhanging. So I can't really get to the LED that easily, but I think I just need to turn it a little bit. And you can see we are able to remove these LEDs. Of course, you have to keep turning the board here so that you can get to all of these components. But we shouldn't have any issue getting the LEDs off at all. Now, let's take a look at the other board. And again, we have no issues at all. And I think the temperature is a little bit too high for this board material. As you can see, we do get this delamination here, but nevertheless, we are able to remove these components. And I just turned down the temperature of the hot plate a little bit to 325 degrees. So let's see if we can do the same thing with 325 degrees. For that, I'm putting on another board here. And you can see the temperature did drop a little bit when we put the board on initially. So let's wait. Yeah, looks like 325 should have no issue at all. And as you can see, when an LED light fails, typically most of the LEDs are actually intact. So let's just take a look at these LEDs here that we just removed. You can see this one is good, this one is good, and this one is good as well. So basically all these LEDs were good. The problem is they are all in series. So if one goes bad, everything else goes bad. The hot plate is actually consists of two parts. One is the heating element, which is on top. You can unplug it. And the other one is the controller unit, which is at the bottom. So let's take a closer look here. Now, just by looking at these pins, I would assume a set of these is for the heater and a set of that is for the temperature measurement. 
and perhaps it's using either a temperature sensor or a thermocouple. So let's buzz it out here. Let's see here, the two top pins. And that's 6.7 ohms. So I think that is actually the heater element because you would draw approximately 3 amps and that's roughly your 65 watts power consumption that is rated for this heater. And the bottom pins, let's see. No, we don't have anything between this two. That's just my finger. Nothing between this two. So let's see the outer two pins. And that's roughly 100 ohms. So that's not a thermocouple. My guess is it's probably just a thermistor here. And now let's open this one up. And it looks like everything is put together very neatly and the construction is quite elegant. You can see we essentially have three pieces. One is the bottom piece and this is the top piece and the one in the middle that's our centerpiece. The centerpiece houses this OLED here, as you can see. The top piece, there's a board that essentially is just an interface board. You have the two pins for the heaters and the three pins for the temperature sensor. As you can see, they are marked at the bottom. And you can see the top board is essentially mated onto the bottom board via these headers. Now, these headers do carry a lot of current because you can see here we have essentially five pins going back to the main board and not all these pins are for the heater. So let's just buzz them out. So these three are connected. You can see these two are connected but not anything else. Now I suppose for handling three amps of current one of these pins probably is sufficient. On the side you can see we have this microcontroller here that is a GD30F103 which is a Cortex M3 microcontroller. And towards up here we also have a small chip that is a GS8552 op amp. And beside these two I don't recognize anything else but we do have a USB interface and also on the reverse side, you can see we have a DC-DC converter and uh, another chip in the middle here. Presumably that's for handling the power PD and whatnot. Maybe it's actually for display, I don't know. But uh, nevertheless, that is all there is on this board here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. The MHP30 is a cute little hot plate and it's mainly geared towards smaller PCBs like those in your cell phone and other smaller electronics. As you have seen in this video, it worked really well. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. I will catch up with you next time.